For the past few years, the AI gold rush has been fueled by a simple, powerful logic. Spend hundreds of billions of dollars on NVIDIA chips to train the next generation of powerful models. But behind that frenzy, a nagging question has always lurked in the background. What happens next? The assumption has always been that once a model is trained, using it, what the industry calls inference, would get progressively cheaper. And if the ultimate goal is cheap, ubiquitous AI, will the insatiable demand for cutting-edge hardware eventually just plateau? And then, recently, something strange happened at a high school math competition. AI models from both Google and OpenAI did the seemingly impossible. They scored at a gold medal level at the International Mathematical Olympiad, one of the world's most difficult tests of pure reason. But the real story isn't that AI won, it's how it won. Because this breakthrough wasn't about making AI cheaper or more efficient. It was about making it far, far more expensive. And in a strange twist of market logic, that might be the very thing that guarantees the AI gold rush is far from over. So, what makes solving a few high school math problems such a big deal for a multi-trillion dollar industry? Computers have been better than humans at raw calculation for decades. But this wasn't about calculation. This was about something much deeper. To understand why, you have to look at past AI victories. When Deep Blue beat Garry Kasparov in chess, or when AlphaGo defeated Lee Sedol in Go, those were incredible feats of engineering. But those AIs were specialists. They were one-trick ponies meticulously designed and trained for a single, well-defined game. The AI that could master the infinite complexities of Go couldn't tell you the capital of France or write a simple line of code. This is what makes the IMO achievement so profound. The models that won weren't specialized math engines, they were generalists the very same kind of large language model architecture that powers ChatGPT and Google's Gemini, trained on a vast corpus of language, science, and code, was put to the test, and it succeeded. This brings us to the second, more important point, the long-running debate about what AI is actually doing. For years, the knock against large language models was that they weren't truly reasoning, Critics argued they were just incredibly sophisticated pattern matchers, stochastic parrots that could predict the next plausible sounding word in a sentence without any real understanding of the underlying logic. They could write a beautiful proof that looked correct, but was full of subtle, fatal flaws. But you can't pattern match your way to a gold medal at the International Mathematical Olympiad. The problems are designed to be novel and to require a rigorous, sustained chain of abstract, verifiable logic. This is where the IMO result becomes a powerful rebuttal. The models weren't just regurgitating answers they'd seen in their training data. They were constructing novel solutions, step by step, using natural language. That last part is key. Previous attempts to get AI to solve complex math relied on translating the problems into a rigid, formal code. But these new models from Google and OpenAI worked through the proofs in plain English, manipulating abstract concepts in a way that looks and feels remarkably human. This wasn't just an incremental improvement in performance. It was a qualitative leap from prediction to something that performs, for all practical purposes, like genuine reasoning. The question then isn't whether AI can reason. The question is, what did it cost to unlock this new ability? And the answer to that lies in a strange paradox, that making AI more expensive is the very thing that will make it a bigger business than anyone imagined. By the way, digging into these second-order questions, not just what happened, but what it means for the entire industry, is the core of our analysis in the ARPU newsletter. If you want to get this kind of strategic breakdown regularly, the link is right at the top of the description. 
So how did they do it? How did a general-purpose AI, prone to making up facts and failing basic logic, suddenly transform into a math prodigy? The secret wasn't a revolutionary new algorithm or a fundamentally different kind of model. It was a strategic choice to unleash a brute force method that the industry has been theorizing about for years. OpenAI's researchers call it massively scaling up test time compute. That's a technical mouthful, so let's use an analogy. Think of a traditional AI model like a brilliant student taking a speed test. They've memorized the textbook, and when you ask a question, they give you an answer almost instantly based on everything they've learned. It's incredibly fast, but if the question is tricky or requires multiple steps, they might make a mistake and not have time to correct it. That's how most chatbots work today. Now, imagine giving that same student a single, incredibly difficult, open book exam problem and telling them to take all the time they need. They aren't just giving one answer. They're exploring dozens of different ways to solve the problem at the same time. They're writing out parallel proofs, cross-checking their own logic, identifying dead ends and discarding flawed arguments before finally converging on the one that is verifiably correct. That is test time compute. It's the difference between a quick recall and a deep, deliberative reasoning process. And as one OpenAI researcher bluntly admitted to Reuters, this method is very expensive. To put the term very expensive into perspective, we need a baseline for what cheap AI costs. According to an industry interview with a director at Micron, a key supplier in the AI hardware ecosystem, the industry expects that on the next generation of hardware, even small routine inference jobs, think summarizing an email or a short report, will cost somewhere between $5 and $10 an hour. Now, consider the cost of solving a problem designed to stump the world's most gifted human mathematicians. This isn't $5 an hour. This is an entirely different order of magnitude. It is a strategic decision to trade cost and efficiency for near-perfect accuracy, using a colossal amount of parallel computing power for a single query. And that strategic choice has just given the entire tech industry a new law of physics to follow. This very expensive new method isn't just a clever trick. It represents a fundamental shift in the economics of artificial intelligence, and it has just given the tech industry a new law of physics to follow. For the last decade, we've lived under what you could call the training scaling law. The mantra was simple. The bigger the model and the more data you trained it on, the smarter it got. This law drove the first wave of the hardware boom, it's why hyperscalers like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft have been spending hundreds of billions of dollars on data centers. We saw the numbers from Del Oro Group in the first quarter of 2025 alone. Data center capital spending hit an astonishing $134 billion, a 53% jump from the year before, all driven by this race to build bigger and better training infrastructure. But a training run, no matter how massive, is ultimately a one-time cost. You spend a fortune to create the model, and then it exists. The inference scaling law is different. It says that the more compute you throw at a single question, the better and more reliable the answer. This fundamentally changes the game. It creates a new, ongoing demand for compute that is tied to usage, not just to the one-time cost of creation, for any problem where accuracy is the primary goal, there is now a dial you can turn. Need more certainty? Spend more compute. This transforms the entire market dynamic. Suddenly, the potential demand for AI hardware is no longer finite. It's a perpetual, recurring cost that scales with the complexity of the problems we ask AI to solve. It means the demand for chips doesn't stop when the training is done. It might have just begun. And the scale of this new market is difficult to comprehend. A recent McKinsey report projected that the total investment required for AI infrastructure could reach $7 trillion by 2030. 
That number might have sounded abstract a few months ago, but now we're seeing it play out in real time. Look at OpenAI's recent deal with Oracle. They've committed to what will become a $30 billion a year contract for 4.5 gigawatts of computing power. That's the output of multiple nuclear power plants dedicated not just to building AI, but to running it. This new scaling law is the engine that will drive that $7 trillion build-out. It's the economic logic that justifies the unprecedented spending we're seeing from every corner of the tech industry. So, who are the winners in a world where AI reasoning is perpetually hungry for more power? The first and most obvious beneficiary is NVIDIA. The company's GPUs are not just processors, they are parallel processing engines. They are designed from the ground up to do exactly what test time compute requires, handle thousands or even millions of independent tasks at the same time. While competitors like AMD and Intel are still fighting to catch up on the hardware, NVIDIA has spent two decades building its software moat, CUDA, which has become the undisputed operating system for AI. This new inference model plays directly into their strengths. NVIDIA is no longer just selling the shovels for a one-time gold rush to train models. They are now selling the electricity to run the entire gold mining town forever. And they are already preparing for it. Their GTC conference in April laid out an aggressive one-year product roadmap, from Blackwell to Rubin to Feynman, explicitly designed to handle the skyrocketing compute demand from both training and this new intensive form of inference. The second group of winners are the hyperscalers. Companies like Amazon, Microsoft, and Google are the only entities on Earth with the capital, expertise, and infrastructure to build the massive server farms needed to sell reasoning on demand to the world. And for them, this isn't just a massive expense, it's an incredibly lucrative business. According to a recent industry interview, the return on investment for the hyperscaler's GPU infrastructure has accelerated dramatically. What used to take 12 to 18 months to pay off now takes just 6 to 9 months. Their GPU utilization rates have soared from under 40% to over 70%. Think about that. They are making their money back twice as fast. This explains why they are willing to spend tens of billions of dollars every single quarter. Every new data center isn't just a cost center, it's a high-yield profit engine. The more compute they can acquire from NVIDIA, the more high-margin reasoning services they can sell to the thousands of businesses that will never be able to afford their own AI supercomputers. This new scaling law doesn't just create demand, it reinforces the dominance of the incumbents who control the supply. Now this brings us back to what the OpenAI researcher has alluded to. Very expensive. The breakthrough at the Math Olympiad isn't a gift of democratic, accessible AI for the world. It is a preview of a new tier of intelligence, one that, for the foreseeable future, is reserved for a tiny, fabulously wealthy elite. OpenAI itself has been clear about this. They've stated that this new level of mathematical reasoning is too costly to be released in a public product for several months. They first have to figure out how to make it cheaper, or more likely, how to price it for customers willing to pay a massive premium. This creates a new and formidable barrier to entry in the AI race. For the last few years, the competition was defined by a frantic war for talent and a scramble for the best algorithms. Now, it's increasingly defined by a single, brutal question. Can you afford the compute? The price of admission to this new club of advanced reasoning is staggering. We saw it with OpenAI's deal with Oracle, a $30 billion a year commitment. That's the entry fee. That's the capital required not just to train a frontier model, but to run it at a level where it can perform these incredible feats of logic. This reality is reshaping who the key players in AI truly are. It's no longer just the most innovative labs. 
the power is consolidating among the entities with the deepest pockets on the planet. The hyperscalers, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, are obvious. They own the infrastructure. Some industry analysts estimate that they're on track to serve 50% of their own internal inference needs with their own custom chips by 2028, further solidifying their control. But a new class of player is also emerging, the sovereign state. Governments and state-backed funds, particularly in the Middle East, are spending hundreds of billions of dollars to build their own sovereign AI infrastructure, recognizing that access to this level of compute is now a matter of national strategic importance. The ability to deploy models capable of advanced, verifiable reasoning is no longer just a function of having the right software. It's a function of having the capital to afford the eye-watering compute bill for every single query. So that nagging question, what happens when the training boom ends, now has an answer. It doesn't end. It simply transforms into an inference boom that could be even bigger and last much longer. The breakthrough at the Math Olympiad wasn't just a test of AI's intelligence. It was a demonstration of its new economic model, a model where deeper reasoning is directly proportional to the amount of compute you're willing to buy. This ensures the demand for the foundational hardware of the AI age will continue its relentless climb, validating the $7 trillion infrastructure forecasts and the stunning six-month returns on investment that are fueling the hyperscaler's spending spree. But in doing so, it also ensures that the power to deploy true AI reasoning, the kind that might one day solve humanity's hardest problems, will be concentrated in the hands of the very few who can foot the astronomical bill. The race for artificial general intelligence has become, more than ever, a race for capital. So what are the second order effects of this new inference scaling law? How does it change the calculus for NVIDIA's competitors or the geopolitical chip race? These are the questions we dive into every week in our newsletter, ARPU. It's designed for anyone who wants to understand not just what's happening in tech, but why it's happening and what it means for the businesses behind the products. You can subscribe at the link in the description below. Thanks for listening.